to everybody that don't know this, I ain't crawled out of the rock. I got to start off by saying, just like the that 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 lyric that said, "Welcome to Atlanta, Miss MC Shadi. Welcome to the Sir Classic Show with yours, one and only Sir Classic and Miss Loose Lips." Man, we, I'm, I can welcome, say, welcome, welcome. No I'm, doubt, I'm just no doubt. happy for you to be on this thing, man. No doubt, man. Glad to be here. So let's get into this. Um, I want to start off by saying, uh, well, not saying, but asking, um, what are you doing nowadays? I want to start off with what you got going on now, and then we're going to take it all the way to the back. Okay, cool. Well, right now, I'm DJing. You know, I'm still I'm still in ATL. I'm DJing in Decatur, Georgia at a spot called Dudley's on Friday and Saturday. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Um, speaking of DJing, because we the world knows you as a rapper. And um, I noticed when you look at the history of music, a lot of rappers that once had an active rap career, a lot of them actually transitioned to DJing or being radio hosts. Like uh, you got Biz Marquee, that, um, you have people like uh, Moni Love. I was just uh, looking at something on her uh, just recently. She went from being Moni in the love, I mean, Moni in the middle to uh, being, matter of fact, she's in Atlanta doing radio. She started off in uh, Philly. Now she's in Atlanta. And, um, you know, there's a lot of other artists that went from that uh, rapper to DJ. How did you go from that? Like, did you make a conscious decision to say, I want to start DJing or did oh, you nah, start? Oh, no, no, believe it or not, I was, I was a DJ before I was a rapper. For real? Oh, yeah, I don't yeah. know that. <laughs> yeah, See, that's yeah, what yeah, we I, said, we in school today. <laughs> yeah, when I, was, when I was 15 years old, maybe 15, 14, I was, you know, I used to be, you know, in my room doing the DJing thing. And then... um. When I got in high school, uh, I met a couple of people. I met a guy by the name of Tony Rock. He used to be uh, down with Luke also. Okay. And um, I met these two brothers from Philly, Special K and Cool D. And basically, we started up a little rap group. But Special K told me that I need to learn how to rap because my voice was different. You know what I'm saying? Because I wanted to be the DJ of the crew. But he was the DJ of the crew, you know what I'm saying? So he convinced me to start being a rapper, you know what I'm saying? So like I said, when he suggested that, that's when I started writing lyrics and I became the DJ slash rapper. But I was Ooh. a DJ first. And when did you, tr so when did you transition back officially to being a DJ? Um, Let's say maybe about 17, 18 years ago, um, I know y'all remember the group Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five. Definitely. Yeah, one of the guys in the group, his name is Scorpio. They used to call him Mr. Ness back in the days, but he changed his name to Scorpio. Make a long story short, he lived around the corner from me and he used to come over to my house uh, to make show show CDs and stuff when they used to go on the road with him and Melly Mel to perform. Oh, wow. And basically he came over my house and I put a show, D, a show, uh, uh, CD together for them for the show, but it consisted of me doing scratches and stuff oh. in there because I was acting like Grandmaster Flash for them. You know what I'm oh. saying? So to make a long story short, he's like, "Yo, man, you need to get in the club." You know what I'm saying? You know you you're a good DJ. You need to be in the club. So at that time in my life, I really wasn't doing nothing. You know what I'm saying? I was just sitting around the house. You know. I had my little money from Luke. So I was, you know, really just being lazy, not doing anything. So I called up uh, my daughter's mom, which is one of the owners of Bigelow. Okay. And I told her, I said, hey, if y'all ever need a, a DJ to fill in for one of the DJs, they don't come, give me a call. And I got that call. And to make a long story short, they was like, yo, we gonna need you to start DJing, you know, a couple of days up in here, you know, and that's that's what got me into the DJing. And that was about 17, 18 years ago that brought me back to DJ. Wow. Okay. I love that. I love that. Oh, Bigelow's, that's a staple yeah. of the community, man. I was sneaking in there way before age, hanging with oh, the yeah. old crew. <laughs> no doubt, no doubt. You know one of saying? my neighbors, I used to stay on Glenwood and one of my neighbors was dating. <laughs> dating the guy Bigelow for, for a minute, like, for a minute and then okay. going up there like I was hanging in there sneaking in there with my aunts and them late night and it was crazy yeah. but that's that's still a staple in the community man yeah I got a 27 year old daughter by one of the owners oh it's, wow it's about it's about five owners it's three brothers and two sisters uh-huh yeah I got a daughter by one of the owners 
Got you. Okay. We're about to go back down memory lane. Um, right. Let's start off with, um, before we get to the legendary Luke records, I want to start off with Foresight. Yeah. Tell us how that deal came about. You, um, well, for those that don't know, you're originally from New York. Um, yeah. But you, we claim you, the, uh, uh, you Atlanta. You, you, you Atlanta. <laughs> Look, Decatur, Atlanta. <laughs> yeah, no <laughs> doubt. Decatur, no Ellenwood. Yeah. How did Grove you, High School. How, how did, did Grove you, Elementary. <laughs> tell me, how was it that you being from Georgia get a deal with a label from Florida, Foresight? T tell us about the Foresight. How okay. that came out. Well, basically, back in the days when rap first came out, they had this big Roxanne, Roxanne craze with Roxanne Shantae, uh, the real Roxanne, the parents of Roxanne, the grandparents wow. of Roxanne, et cetera. So I got to open up for the parents of Roxanne, which was Gigolo and Lacey Lace. They was at a Florida. They was at a, a, a record. I mean, they was at a Foresight Records. Okay. And they manager was a lady by the name of Vanis Lopez. So when I opened the show for them, Vanish stepped to me. She was like, yo, you was good. What's the name of your song? What label you on? I was like, nah, I'm local. You know what I'm saying? I said, I'm just local. Um, I'm trying to get a deal, but I'm local. She was like, well, my boyfriend owned a label, which was Billy Hines, MCADE dad. Okay. Let me go back to Florida, talk to him, and I'll try to get you a deal. So a week later, she called me, and they put me and DJ Man on the Greyhound bus, and we went down there and made Rap Will Never Die. Wow, that, that's a classic right there. I yep. listen to that from time to time. Matter of fact, so crazy, I was just listening to it before we decided to get on this interview. I said, I got to get it, <laughs> get okay. that the system. Um, how long were you on, on Foresight? I mean, how many records did you cut for them? I only made, believe it or not, two 12 inches. I made Rap Will Never Die, which was the first, which was, they everybody call it the Pink Panther. The Pink Panther, yeah. Yeah, and then my second uh, 12 inch was called Shy D is Back, which was the Sanford and Son. Okay. Yeah, so I made I made them two singles with them, and then after that, that's when I got, went over to Lou. Well, who, the the TV the TV theme samples. Who idea was that? The sound for the sun. The yeah, baby. but they was mine because see, I was a I was a fan of rap music, and at okay. the time, you know, Dougie Fresh had the Inspector Gadget. And you know, all the rappers back then, they was using stuff like that, like cartoon stuff. So I, I always told myself, yo, if I ever get to make a record, I'm gonna use the Pink Panther and I'm gonna use, you know, Sanford and Son, you know? So like I say, those was thoughts I had way back, way back that if I ever get a chance to make a record, I was gonna use them joints. Okay, cool. Um, now, you said you did two 12 inches and then I'm guessing did, did well, let me ask you this because I'm guessing and correct me if I'm wrong. Did, did you solicit or did Luke come looking for you was because of um, I'm guessing the. I'm lost for words. The, the two singles that you did for Foresight, did that have other labels looking, trying to sign you? Or did you say, I want to go get with Luke? Oh, no, nah, no. Nah, believe it or not, uh, Fresh Kid Ice, may he rest in peace. I did a show when I was with Foresight with the two live crew. They had, um, I think they had throw the D out or something. Make oh. a long story short, Fresh Kid Ice stepped to me. He was like, yo, man, um, Luke is a big fan of yours and you know, he got his pride. So he ain't gonna step to you. So he, they sent me on this mission to come over here and holler at you. You know what I'm saying? So he was like, man, Luke is a big fan of yours. And he, he would like for you to come join the label. I told him, I said, yo man, I only got about four months left in my contract with Foresight and tell him when my contract went out, I'll definitely come holler at him. And when my contract ran out, that's when I gave him a call. Teach, you just taught me something new because that's a question that's always been going in my head. I said, and it's a blessing. I said, Luke Records, the magnitude, the success Luke had back in the day with two live crew and all of that, just selling records. He got a kid from Decatur, Georgia. How did that come about? All Out of all he, people he could have signed, starting out, not 
not none of the acts afterwards, like Home Team, H Town, and all of them. Yeah, you see Shadi, and I was like, how did that happen? But you just told the story. Yeah, definitely. You know what I'm saying, and it, you know, it really shocked me. You know, when Fresh Kid Eyes came over, because I was like, yo, man, I'm fan of y'all. You know what I'm saying? So basically, they were fan of mine, and I was fan of those. So fan of them. So. Yeah. It was a good thing to basically go join and get down with them. You know what I'm saying? Ooh. And then how did you, so being there and being signed on to their label, how did you then come back to Atlanta? Um, What you mean, like come back to Atlanta? Or you were always still living in Atlanta and you were just recording and still just part yeah. of the label in Florida, but you never had moved there. No, nah, I never moved to Miami. I used to stay in hotels for like eight or nine months. Wow. Oh, yeah. Okay. I'm yeah, thinking I, you actually moved since you did, you know, Forsyth Record and now you got on there with uh, Luke. I'm thinking you actually moved to Florida and then you just came on back to Atlanta. Nah, it was so hot down there. I could never have lived down there because <laughs> the weather was hot. You know what I'm saying? It was too hot for me. So, like I say, when I was with these companies, I was just really staying in hotels and stuff. You know what I'm saying? While I was you know, handle my business with them and stuff. Okay. Let's dive into the creative process. Matter of fact, before the creative process, DJ Man, your your mellow, your ace. I'm guessing DJ Man was your uh, Jam Master J or your uh, Jazzy Gel. Yeah, no doubt. Now, this is interesting. When, when we look at your album covers, I noticed that one person that always was on a lot of your album covers was this legendary, well, he's a legend in my right too is dj toon yeah talk, talk talk about that like where you got man i'm guessing tell, is man your show dj and then toon was like tell us about that because you got now nah, well basically what had happened was man started messing around with the substance abuse you know what i'm saying okay. yeah i started having problems with him you know for as you know he started to get high stuff so he started missing shows you know what i'm saying he started, you know, like I say, when it was time to handle business, he was nowhere to be found. So I told uh, Cool Kali at the time, Kali was my manager, his name was Rodney Terry. He's the guy on Gotta Be Tough saying, yo, who's this kid Shad D? I told him, I said, yo, man, I gotta find another DJ, man, cause I can't keep going through this with DJ man. You know what I'm saying? So I started thinking like, well, who can I get? I was like, yo, I remember me and Toon battling back in like 81, oh, 82. Wow. We had a DJ battle against each other. And I mean, he just killed me. He was scratching with his shoe and <laughs> his mouth and everything. He just wiped me out. You know what I'm saying? So I had thought about him. So I was like, yo, I'm going to go find that guy, DJ Toon. And he wasn't really hard to find because at that time, him and Mike Fresh was with Raheem the Dream. Raheem. Yeah, Mike Fresh and uh, Toomp, they produced Raheem the Dream, you know what I'm saying? So I, I reached out, believe it or not, I reached out to Mike Fresh first because Mike Fresh was a good producer. And I told him I wanted to, him to be my producer and my DJ. He was like, yo, man, my, my DJ skills ain't really that good. But Toomp, you know, you mentioned Toomp. Toomp lived right around the corner from me, which was a crazy coincidence. I didn't even know that. So basically, I brought both of them along with me, and I, I got rid of DJ Man. Dang, he missed his blessing. Right. Nah, but it was a, it was a good thing because believe it or not, when I got rid of him, Luke picked him up and put him with Lawan Love. Oh wow! He became Lawan Love DJ. Yeah. Say yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. Now, um, here's Shadi. If when people listen to your music, your, a lot of your music is, um, it's a southern. It's north. If you really pay attention, it's southern. Um, now you're on the the legendary Luke Records, which we, is known to a lot of us as Booty Shake Miami. Booty Shake. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Were you? Um, with the fan base that they already had with Luke, Two Live Crew, do you feel that the um, fans 
accepted you in with your sound as they've already accepted the whole Miami based booty shake music and that whole loop. I mean, that whole Florida thing. sound. Oh yeah. Yeah. They, I mean, man, you wouldn't believe it, man. They, they loved me because I think, I mean, I know I came, like I say, you already got a group making those type of records. Why would I get on the label and start trying to make they type of music? I gotta, I gotta continue to be shy D that the few fans I had when I was on Foresight loved me for, you know what I'm saying? So basically, like I say, I kept the Shy D style, you know what I'm saying? I mean, Toomp, when we made a Come and Correct an 88 album, Toomp and Mike Fresh wasn't on the Gotta Be Tough album with me. Okay. But they, when we did Come and Correct an 88, my second album, Toomp, you know, he brought it to, we had a, we had a sit down meeting, he was like, yo man, Let's make a record like Two Live Crew. I said, yo, man, I'm not Two Live Crew. Two Live Crew, Two Live Crew, Shy D is Shy D. He was like, you know, I'm not saying let's make a bunch of records like that. Let's make one so we could try to generate and get a few of their fans. Okay. So that's when uh, I was like, well, what you got in mind? He was like, well, man, you know, just make a song and tell the girls to shake it or dance or something. And that's, <laughs> that's where the idea came of Shake It. You know what I'm saying? I sat down. I wrote Shake It, Mike Fresh produced the beat, and it was a great idea he came up with because Shake It was my biggest record to date that I ever I made because it crossed over to white people. I, I know, we, we spoke about that before because I think you probably don't remember, I asked you a question a while back, I said, who's your biggest audience? And you and you said something that shocked me, you were like, uh, I think you said the Mexicans, the Latinos? Yeah, Latinos out there in California, in I was Texas. Like, wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they was way bigger than my black audience, you know what I'm saying? And it, it's so crazy, I got to take my hat off the tomb because it was just for Shake It. I mean, you know, Shake It was, Shake It is still so big in California and Texas, man, they still calling me for shows today. Wow. Wow. That's that speaks volumes right there. Yeah, so that was, that was a blessing, man, that he came up with that idea for that song. Okay. Well, I would say... You know, another blessing is the fact that, you know, when Jermaine Dupri made that whole welcome to Atlanta. Oh, yeah, that was a that was I mean, it was so crazy because I remember that. I mean, I remember that day so clear because my cousin, I, I when I had my money from Luke, I had opened up a sports bar in my neighborhood in Ellenwood. And my cousin came to the club. He was like, yo, man, J.D. looked out for you. I said, what the fuck JD do for me? <laughs> you know, I ain't know what he was talking about. I said, JD ain't did shit for me. He's like, nah, he got a record. And he mentioned your name. I was like, what? So he's like, yeah, they playing the record like every 30 minutes. You ain't heard it. So the next day I heard the song and I got so excited. You know what I'm saying? I was like, damn, <laughs> he did look out for me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so uh, maybe about a week later, Greg Street called me and said, Jermaine Dupree wanted me to be in the video. Wow. wow. Yeah, I mean, I well, I made an appearance in the video. You can't if you blink your eye, you miss me. But <laughs> <laughs> I was in there. You know what I'm saying? Uh, <laughs> you know, it's all good because that's you know that's our theme song for Atlanta. So it's not going anywhere, and it's still okay. be played to this day. So you know, the younger generation is going to always kind of know who you are because they're curious when they hear the song, like who's the people mentioning there. So it, it was that's a blessing right there. Yeah, that was a big blessing, man. You know what I'm saying? I, I mean, it don't get no bigger than Jermaine Dupree. You know what I'm saying? So, and y'all, I could tell y'all a crazy story. I don't know if we got time, but oh, Jermaine Dupree, ever since his whole career, he been telling people I wrote his first rhyme, but I don't remember that. For real? What? Yeah, he told BET that. BET interviewed me about that. He, you know, he just did a special, some kind of special. He was on there and he said that on TV. I was like, but I don't remember the girl, the Bigelow girl that I was with at the time. Mm -hmm. She said she remembered that. She said he used to come over to my mom's house and we used to go down in the basement. But I don't remember that. He said his dad used to bring him over there and I used to teach him how to rap. But I don't remember. I cannot tell y'all no lie. I don't remember that. <laughs> Well, that's all right. The important thing is he remembers and he's paying homage and respects to you. So look, we'll take it as it is. Yeah, yeah. And that is so that is so incredible to me. When I saw him when I did the Super Bowl thing for him two years ago, when they gave him, you know, he was in charge of the entertainment in Atlanta when the Super Bowl mm -hmm. came to Atlanta. 
he told me that then, and I, I swear, y'all, I can't remember that. I can't. I'll be telling a lie. I say, yeah, I remember writing the wrong. <laughs> I don't remember that. <laughs> I don't remember that one. Hey. Uh, hey, it's all good. Um, But I do have a question, because you mentioned his dad. Shouts out to his dad. He doesn't get the credit that he deserves, but uh, let's talk about Michael Modlin. Do you remember? Yeah, yeah I remember Mike because... Um, you know, he used to be down with a guy by the name of Rick Walker. They brought the Fresh Fest to Atlanta yeah. back yeah. when Run DMC and all that. You talking, I'm talking 1984. You know yeah. what I'm saying? That was a very long time ago when rap started getting big and stuff. And Jermaine Dad, he was like the stage manager and stuff. So I used to see Jermaine, his mom and dad at all the concerts because I used to go to the concerts when they come to the Omni, which is uh, Phillips Arena now. Yes, yeah. His his dad, for those that don't know, I'm gonna get him on here. A lot of people don't know who he is, but is if it wasn't for his dad, you know, there wouldn't be no Jermaine Dupree. It wouldn't be no because you know, not this ain't about him. He he's he's a he's he's got another legend in the game, you know, doing role manage for Houdini and all that old stuff. And people yeah, don't know Jermaine, that. You, Jermaine used to dance for Houdini yeah. when he was a little young kid, like 12 years old. Yeah, definitely. What? Yeah. Yeah. If you go look, it's all in there. That's why I think it was in '96. I got a chance to meet, um, was it Jaleel? One of the Houdini members. Okay. And Jermaine gave him a shot on doing that record that they put out. Yeah. You know, also, Delph, but you know what it was. It was all about giving back. Watches the other. What yeah. You I, I wish he would have gave me a chance, man. <laughs> you know, like when he said I wrote his rap. I wish he would have came back. Yeah, I'm gonna give you your. I gave him Dini they chance. They blew it. I'm gonna give you a chance. I wouldn't have blew my chance. You no, know but he did. It's never huh? too late. It's never too late. He might. Well, well, I you know that the, the, the label thing is different now. What I mean by that is, I mean you know, everything is 360 deals now. It's not like back in the 90s when you know what I'm saying. So it's yeah, different now. True. And then. I think I don't wait it too late now. I'm a little too old now. You it's know fine. what I'm saying? You you still legend. But I do mm-hmm. recall him doing it. Let, let's go back to 96, 97. Yeah. Uh let's talk about the So So Dove Base All Star. Well He was on that. That's something uh Lil John, even though it was on So So Dev, but it that's you all the base legends, Poncho, MC Shy D, Raheem the Dream, uh, Kizzy Rock. I mean, everybody. LA DJ Smurf. DJ Smurf messed that up for me because he didn't want to make a record. Okay. You know, I told I was managing Smurf. I got Smurf his record deal with Itchy Barn, but Smurf had got the big head. You know what I'm saying? When Jermaine, when Lil John called us up, said, "Yo, Jermaine is putting his base thing together. He wants y'all to." make a record. Smurf had the big head because he had Ooh Lord out. We had Ooh Lord out. He was like, nah, man, they just trying to use us because we hot right now. I said, yo, man, we need to make a record on this joint. Make a long story short, Smurf didn't want to do it, so we just did some talking on it. Go back and listen to that. Oh, we, wow. we didn't record a record. We just did some talking on it. And you know, I'm pissed, man, because I wanted to make a record right. on it. But right. Smurf, like I say, Smurf was ego tripping, so we, we didn't we gonna get it. We're gonna get into that. Speaking of <laughs> Mr. Tyler Park, um, I know that he wait, wait, wait. Just okay. before you say that, can you say that one more time? I cannot, I've been in Atlanta a long time now, and I still cannot say College Park that way. And it burns me. <laughs> say it one more time. I love to hear people from Atlanta say that. Say right. it one more time. Oh, College Park. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, she she got me. She got me. Um, okay. Um, is is no holds bar, right? Cause no holds bar. You know, nah. Yeah, they talk about the bad, right? Oh yeah, we're gonna talk about everything. Okay, let's um now because after you after you mention this, I'm gonna bring something to your attention too because right what you about to talk about right after that happened, that's when I ran into you and you gave me and my girl a break. But we're going to talk about that. You don't remember that, but go ahead and say what you're going to say. <laughs> I, I'm talking about, okay. Okay. You, you, you're on top of the world. Um, yeah. Because I haven't even got to the loop, but just talk, let's talk about Shadi is on top of the world. Records selling everything, and MC Shadi gets in trouble. Yeah. And 
I want you to go into that. Like what happened was a, a, just a hater hating, but whatever happened, yeah. now you got to go sit down for a very long time. Very yeah. long time. So when you get out, you feel me? Um, I w- Well, let's just talk about that and I'll get more. What, what was all that about you going to sit down? Okay, well, basically what had happened was uh, I started having problems with Luke at the end of the Coming Correct in 88 album because Luke was, he was, you know, keeping all the money. He was jerking. So when it was time for me to get my royalty check for the Coming Correct in 80, 88 album, he only gave me $50,000. So what I did, I took that money and got a lawyer to sue him. But in the meantime, in between time, that's when I started Ben's Records up, my own label, and I got a deal with Joey Boy Records. You can still hear me? Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. Okay, I got a deal with Joey Boy Records. That's when I did the Don't Sweat Me album, me and Toon, because Mike Fresh stayed with Luke. Okay. And me and Toon, Toon came with me, and we, we tried to start the label and do the Don't Sweat Me album. Make a long story short, the album was unsuccessful. You know what I'm saying? It, so what I did was, you know, me being from the streets anyway, I got back into the streets. You know what I'm saying? Because Toon, he started getting discouraged. So Luke called him up to be the DJ for the Poison Clan. Okay. So then Toon went back to Luke. So basically I'm on my own, which was cool because I dove back into the street. So, you know, I'm back in the streets doing my thing in the streets. And um, in Decatur, it was a guy, he's been a bully all through the 80s, the early 80s. He was in and out of prison. Make a long story short, big dude, about six, six, three, six, four. And I used to see him all the time slapping people out. He was the first Debo, not trying to be funny. I seen him going in people's pockets in 81. Like he he would slap you upside your head, throw you up against the wall and go in your pocket. So he was the first Debo that I remember. So I used to see this. I used to be like, man, this dude here, you know, I used to always just say to myself, if he ever fuck with me, I'm going to do something to him. You know what I'm saying? Because what he's doing to other people, that ain't my business. You know what I'm saying? They got to handle their own. But when it came to me, you know, basically my day came when he tried me and I did what I had to do to him. You know what I'm saying? So. That's when I went and had to sit down, you know what I'm saying? So that's when I sat down and then now we back home. So I forgot what you were saying after that, you know what I'm saying? You end up winning that lawsuit, just to rewind, right? You yeah, won the I, did, I did win a lawsuit. Right, so, okay. You know. I just wanted to make that clear because I, I remember you winning. Okay. Yeah, that came, I think, yeah, that came in 94 because they was coming to the prison and everything, taking depositions. You okay. know, Luke lawyers and my lawyer. So it, it went on. I think the case went went for about maybe five years. Wow. Yeah. Well, by the time when you were still, you know, sitting down, I guess while you was do, dealing with the lawsuit, I'm guessing more royalties accumulating and yeah, yeah, everything. Records. Um, I know this is this like I said, this is about Shadi. I know it's not about auditing and bad contracts and all that other stuff. Dang. Luke was not doing right by guys. That's <sighs> oh yeah, he was jerking everybody. But see the thing, Sir Classic, they got me. One thing about me, man. I mean, anybody that really know me and say, man, is this that dude Shad is the realest man. He 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 the realest. He gonna keep it real twenty four seven. Okay. And this what happened. What made me really sue Luke? I wouldn't have su- sued him. He told me one night he got drunk at the club. He said, hey man, I'm gonna jerk everybody on the label but you, cause you real. And I told Luke, I said, yo man, I'm gonna hold you to your word on that. He said, I promise I'm not gonna jerk you, but everybody else is getting jerked. And he told me that. I have a, <clears throat> I have a high level respect for people like Luke, Jay Prince, Master P, you name it. Anybody yeah. that's paved the way for this music, because things that they've done, I follow. But one thing I don't agree with in 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 life period is doing wrong to nobody, because karma is real. Oh yeah, There's definitely. Goes around. You definitely. Feel me? <clears throat> Just like I don't know what what he had in his mind, but all these people got to eat. They got families to feed. They got to feed themselves. Why are you jerking anybody? 
Yeah, and I yeah, mean, so. the money was there, man. The money was there. You know, the man, I seen, we went, I mean, I was there from the beginning. We went from Pack Jam to one of them high-rise buildings. That's the type of money, I mean, they they made him get out of Pack Jam because too much business was going on. Them tractor trailers was coming through getting the records and stuff. And the people that owned the building said he got too much traffic. So he had, he was making so much money, he had to get out of Pack Jam. Wow. So, um, you know what? You just put me up on something. So <clears throat> Ben's records rules started before you went. Because I know when you had got, came home uh, from prison, <clears throat> I remember you put out, if I could correct me, uh, your greatest hits. No, I came with the comeback album first. I mean, Cause I remember the, the greatest hits, and right after that, <clears throat> you um, you had a big affiliation with Smurf. Everybody yeah. knows that because he, I guess, he was like your protege. Um, <clears throat> did you know Smurf prior to? Nah, let me. Okay, <clears throat> now let me tell you the story on Smurf, which is so funny. When I left Luke and got down with On Top, and put the Don't Sweat Me album out, I had a concert in Canada. The people called me from Canada to do a show. So I don't know, was you in Atlanta when they had Edward J and Lady DJ, the J team? First time, when I moved to Atlanta, late 93, my neighbor told me yeah. about DJ Jelly yeah. and the J team and me being who I was, I needed to meet these folks. I jumped on okay. the bus to go yeah. to the road to meet Edward J. <laughs> yeah, okay. Edward J, the J team was before DJ Jelly. Yes. So... Edward J had a sister named Lady DJ. She used, me and her used to make mid CDs. Okay. J, J, Smurf and Kizzy Rock was making theirs and me and Lady DJ was making ours. So to make a long story short, I got a call from Canada. So I called Lady D, DJ up. I said, yo, Lady DJ, I need a DJ. I gotta go to Canada. She was like, shy, I can't perform in front of all them people once you get Smurf. I said, you know, I said, how old is he? About 12 or something? I said, <laughs> you know, he was real young. He was 15 at the time. Okay. So I was like, well, you know how to get in touch with him? Because I'm going to have to talk to his mom and dad. So she hooked it up where I was able to go to Smurf House, talk to his mom and dad, tell him I was going to Canada. I had a couple of shows in Canada and a couple of shows in New York. So they let him go with me. Believe it or not, he was like 15. Wow. So during the course of that time, he was so dope and did so good performing with me. I told him, I said, yo, man. I got a case, I'm cased up. I'm gonna have to go to prison for a couple of years. But what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna teach you how to work my drum machine, the SB1200. You get it, you master it. And when I get out of prison, we'll pick up where we left off at. And that's how the, the College Park thing came about. Wow. When I got out of prison, that's when he had produced all the beats. We, we did, I did the comeback album, MC Shadi, the comeback with Itchy Barn. I remember that. You know, yeah. Smurf, you know, a lot of people know him from Smurf. A lot of people know him from Mr. Collie Paul. But Smurf dropped a lot of street hits. I remember the first time I met Smurf, um, we was over there at Think Illusions. And I was doing trying to do something with him. And I remember Smurf, he said, he say, is it bass? He said, oh, yeah. That's, he was, that's all he wanted. If it wasn't booty shake, he wasn't mess with it. I, okay. I was like, yeah, oh. yeah. He said, is it bass? But yeah, Smurf a good guy. So um, you did that. Um, Ooh, Lord. Um, wait, wait, wait. No, I want to go back because we skipped over part of the story. Like, okay. I want to hear the part where you were about to say Classic had did something for you coming out of the other story. We got in the other story. You said he probably don't even remember. I probably yeah, don't. <laughs> but yeah, okay. So it's, he still didn't fast forward it enough. But what um, happened was. When me and Smurf was together, during the course of that, me and Smurf's sister hooked up. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, she was a rapper also. So to make a long story short, she was part of the PMHI clique. So me and her started dealing. So Smurf uh, came to us one day. He said, man, y'all in love. So I'm moving on. You know what I'm saying? He said, y'all seem like y'all don't want to do the rap thing no more. So I'm moving on. So during the course of him moving on, that's when he went and got Yin Yang twins and blew up. But we was in love, but we were still doing our music. And one day I was in a 280 feet, 285 flea market. Classic had a, a shop in there. 
I, do yeah. you remember that classic? That's yeah, where I met him. Shop in every yeah. flea <laughs> huh? I you was with him? I had a shop in every flea market. Yeah. I, yeah. I saw you. I saw you in the 285 flea market, and you was like, yo, Shy, I'm putting together a, a show at East Lake Park, and I want you to come perform. Definitely. And I told you, yeah, me and my girl will come. Remember me and Smurf's sister was I forgot, together. But now that you said it, I, you made me think about it, yo. Think about it. It was me and her. And yeah. wow. me and her, we came and performed. You put us down for that big show you had out there. And we came out there and performed for you. And I, I never think, forgot you know, that. I appreciate you. Um, Cause my, what's in me is to keep the, the curating this, the, the culture of music. Yeah. And like, like I told you, you heard me say a few minutes ago, everybody that's come up that's made history. Yeah. What they've done, I try to at least do that or do it better. So okay. when, when you saw, and that was the May Day event, we, it still goes on. I, I okay. tried to do it in the oh, yeah. DeKalb County. Okay. When it was all said and done, DeKalb County didn't want that. Even me helping with Glenwood Day and all that, we just yeah. the realization they don't want all that. Okay. You, no, seriously. Free yeah, no, I can believe you. Same way when um, Bill Campbell, did away with freak nick it's gone it's yeah because you know the violence came with it and stuff all the shooting then they started raping girls at the freak nick so mm -hmm. you can't get upset with that because it started getting crazy and crazier you know yeah i was just listening to you guys last night by the way i was listening to an old mixtape um dj triple j did because okay nice to sell and and it's crazy i was just listening to uh throw them bowls Okay, yeah, me and you know, me and Smurf's sister got a 19 year old daughter, you know what I'm yeah, saying? The rhythm. Yeah, yeah. So um so that's what happened with the me and Smurf situation. Me and her fell in love and you know, Smurf moved on and he was very successful. He went and got Yang Yang, Soldier Boy, and became a millionaire, you know. <laughs> yeah. Um he learned he he learned from the best. Um that whole history with Yin Yang, D-Rock Kane. Um, I just, we just spoke uh, to one of his artists just earlier. <laughs> we just spoke to him. Um, okay. Yeah, Smurf, he's he's a um, a pioneer in the game. He had to learn from the best. Oh That's yeah, definitely, That's man. And I, I really meant nothing but good for him. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, God don't make no mistakes. You know what I'm saying? So that was bound to happen with me and his sister hooking up and him moving on and being successful, you know what I'm saying? I mean, it was a really a blessing in disguise for him because if me and her wouldn't have hooked up and fell in love, he'd still be broke down like we would. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> he wouldn't he wouldn't have been able to go make them millions. You know what I'm saying? Wow. <laughs> you know, so you know what's so crazy about that? Um, because I was right there. You probably don't know my my background when it comes to putting out records. I still put out records to this day. Yeah, I be seeing a lot of stuff. Yeah, it ain't stopping. Uh, normally, back when we used to do the promo runs, the chiller runs, I be somewhere. I see Lil John. I see Smurf. Like we, if we in Montgomery, we in yeah. Columbus, wherever we at, we know it's just I'm doing me, he doing him. We all That's right. Do the same thing, but it, it's a grind. And um, I one thing I could say because, like I said, it's about you. And I learned something from Smurf. I, okay, I keep it to this day because I was like. Man, it's something about you. You you have the formula on, on creating hit records because it all starts with the music. I don't yep, care. They sure do. He comes and I always ask him, "What's what's the formula?" He said, "Man, the beat, the hook, and then whatever they talking about. Like yep. when he did whistle while you twerk with the twins. I was like, a simple kid melody, and he made a hit record. I remember. That. I remember being in the club and them playing." Whistle while you twerking. That's right. Hanging this thing. So he has that formula. He's yeah. been making hits since, since the LJ, like, yeah, way to tell me. Yeah. Now. But I told Smurf when I taught him how to work the drum machine, I said, yo, if you don't got a beat, you don't got a record. That's okay. right. You know what I'm saying? I told him that. I said, you know, Shad career wasn't built off no rap, it was built off beats. Woo, it I, I couldn't rap, you know what I'm saying? And I knew I wasn't a good rapper, but I had beats. Every beat 
that you used to hear the rap will never die believe it or not i banged on the table for the guy to program it in the drum machine because i didn't know how to work a drum machine and then the shot d is back i banged on the table again for the guy to program it in there gotta be tough i did that beat i banged on the table mr mitch programmed the beat that gotta be tough because i didn't know how to work a drum machine let's talk about some of them hit records you got gotta be tough shake it uh rap will never die um uh, in Atlanta, I don't know if you permit that became a big song for me. Atlanta, that's where I stay. Tell, let's talk about it. Let's talk, tell how did yeah. you come about some of the records? Well, basically, me being from New York, my dad, you know, and and I didn't really being from New York, but my dad, when we lived in New York, I said I should say when we lived in New York when I was little. My dad used to come home. He worked for General Motors. Okay. So he used to come home every day and start drinking, sitting in the living room playing music, like until it's time for him to go to bed. So he used to play a lot of Ozzy K's. He used to lot play a lot of everything. So I used to be in there with him. I was a little baby, like five, six years old. I used to sit on his lap and be in there while he drunk and listen to music. And <laughs> <laughs> you know, all that music just stayed with me. Okay. So when the rap thing came along and they started sampling and using, I was like, oh man, I'm gonna start digging the crates some of these songs my dad used to play. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So that's how my whole rap thing, I just, everything I remember my dad playing, I was trying to put in a, a song. Cool. And they wasn't tripping about samples back then. Right. You know, until Biz got in trouble with the uh, Just a Friend thing, Just I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's when the they started, yeah, the, the sample clearance, what? Oh, you know. now I gotta let me see, Miss Lucy. You got something for? Because I got I got this question. I really want to. I want to know. Let's talk about some other legends. In the okay. Game. Why didn't MC Shadi never do a record with Kilo Ali? Well, um, what you call them? Collaborations yes, wasn't man. big back then. When when we was rapping and Kilo came right after us. I mean, it was like you had to prove your own self. You. Okay. Don't go out and get this guy to help you make a record. Don't go out and get, that's why, think about it. Go back and listen to old school rap records. Okay. Whatever rap group was rap groups, they wasn't doing collabos. That was that was considered whack to us back then if you had to go get somebody to help you on a song. Unlike now, you see, that's all these rappers do. Everybody on everybody's song. Cause I would have loved to make a, rap, a record with Kilo, especially that do you hear what I hear cause Kilo don't know. Kilo dissed me when he first came out, believe it or not. I didn't know but that. I was a fan. He made a song called, jo you know, I made in Atlanta and he made a song called George on his first album. It was kind of corny. It was whack. But I wasn't upset because I was still a fan of his. And when he made Do You Hear What I Hear, I really wanted to go to him and say, man, can I get on the remix of this song? Because that's how much of a fan of his I was. But we didn't know each other. Okay. I didn't meet Kilo till I got out of prison. Okay. Um, Raheem the Dream. Well, Raheem the Dream made a smart move. He caught me fresh out of prison and we made short shorts. When I, I'm talking about, I was a week out of prison. Raheem called me up like, yo, shot man, I got an idea for a record. Are you with it? <laughs> and that's when we made short shorts. Okay, you know what I, ooh, I forgot. Yeah. But then you guys had the, the battle. Well, it wasn't really yeah, the, 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 kind of like the verses on, on YouTube. I watched that. that yeah. Was, I watched that. Yeah. Wow. yeah. And, so and, who put that together? How did that come about? Well, I I I would give Kizzy Rock credit for that because he did the first one, him and Kilo. I don't know if did y'all see they verses. It was I ugly. Mm. I mean, when I say it was ugly, they was in two different places. The audio sounded horrible, and then they was arguing and cursing at each other. I mean, <laughs> Kilo was drunk and Kizzy Rock was high. So they that was a terrible versus. So when Kizzy Rock called me for the one with Raheem, I said, yo, man, let me tell you right now, I'm not, get, I'll do it, but I'm not going to be arguing with no Raheem. You know what I'm saying? I'm not, I'm I, that ain't my style. You know what I'm saying? This is just plain music. I told him, let me put it together. Let's put both of us in the same place and we sit down and we do it like grown men supposed to do it. So that's how that, that's how that came about. But Kizzy Rock had the idea for it. But 
far as the way it went with us being in the same room and everything, it was beautiful because the sound was right. I wish y'all could have saw Kizzy Rocks and Kilos. It was a disaster. <laughs> look, was, I'm going to say, look, I'm going to try to look that up on this interview. You got like, to. It was a disaster. <laughs> Kilo was drunk and Kizzy Rock was hot. <laughs> nah, I, <laughs> it was crazy. Wow. Yep. You have to uplift the culture, not bring it down. Yeah, yeah. So you it was crazy. Um, <laughs> well, you got Kizzy Rock. Because I, if I can remember, because I watched y'all's uh, DJ Black Magic was uh, DJing for uh, me. You. Yeah. Kizzy was Raheem, Raheem DJ. Yeah. Yeah. And y'all put that, the, the show was put together well because I, I even liked how y'all had the background of you know, the whole mirage of city of Atlanta. And I mean, you know, that yeah, whole- Raheem put that together. Raheem told the guy, the guy studio we use, do you know Scott from STR? Yes. Uh, I, white guy with no legs. I, I know. Paralyzed. Scott. He got legs. Back in the day. Yeah. Back, well, way, way back. We Get did it at more. his studio. Yes. Okay. Yeah. You guys did well on that. Um, well, let's talk about, because I didn't, we, we, we kind of leaving from that, but let's go back to the Luke thing. Okay. All the artists that was on Luke Records, um, some of um, my favorites, one of my favorite groups from uh, Luke Records is Poison Clan. Okay. Uh, the Poison Clan album, uh, 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 JT Money and, and uh, what's his name? Uh, woo, got me going back. Kevin Neal. Yeah. <laughs> when... When you, I'm probably sure you're you're gone at this time. Did you? Yeah, I was I was gone. I didn't get a chance to meet him. Oh, that's why I was getting ready to go in. Any of those artists? Did you get a chance? What about um, uh, uh, JT Money, Splat Pack? I mean, not Splat Pack, but uh, Poison Clan. Nah, I didn't get a chance. I was gone when 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 I left Luke. They got with Luke, so I didn't get a chance to meet them. I didn't meet JT until '96. Okay. 97, yeah. And they got with Luke right right at 89, 90 when they did the Poison Clan album. You have a crystal ball right now. Mm -hmm. Just you got a crystal ball. Do you see bass, booty shake music ever coming back or having a resurgence? Well, these, these rappers... Now they speeding it up a little bit, but they they not going that fast. I don't see it coming back. To you those they, BPMs, that high BPM. Nah, they they, they in the one hundred BPM because you know I'm DJing in the club and they got the uh like the trouble song. Um, they they on a new New Orleans bounce thing right now. You know, taking all the New Orleans songs and stuff like that, and they taking a lot of Smurf stuff. I heard a new song with Tiger and them. They got a uh, Salt Shaker and stuff in it. But uh, I don't see them really speeding it up like that because, believe it or not, they already at that tempo, but they the beats are slow. Let me let me turn the hat to the to the producer mode right now. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I don't know. I haven't checked, but you can tell me from your own mouth. Would you want any of the new artists that's coming out or? Every artist, now we talk about making records uh, to sample any of any old MC Shadi. Uh, oh, yeah, that's a check. You know what I'm saying? What they say? That's a bag. Would you, <laughs> you know? Would you but, but, okay, let me tell you something. This is from my heart. Okay. For since, let's say, five years ago, from five years up to now, okay. I have had maybe 10 Artists call me, but I told all of them no, not trying to be funny because they was independent. And my lawyer told me, do not give your music away to these independent artists because the record ain't gonna go nowhere. Okay. If anybody wanna sample your stuff, it needs to be a Rick Ross, a Cardi B, a Drake, a Little Wayne, where you can get some real money. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So like I said, I have had I had somebody call me last week and the dude got upset. Matter of fact, um, before he called, Thrill the Player from the 69 Boys called. He putting out a new album 
and he wanted to use shake it and I told him no and he got upset you know what I'm saying and he couldn't understand why you know what I'm saying and I was going to explain to him why but he took it so much to the heart I just said fuck it you know what I'm saying so I called my lawyer after I told him no and my lawyer said um he's not he's not on a major don't give it away you know what I'm saying my lawyer is a, a, a Jewish lawyer. He's real smart, man. He he. My lawyer is Little Joe that own Joy Walker. That's my lawyer. Are you serious? Yeah, that's my I lawyer. About that? <laughs> uh, yeah, so that's my <laughs> lawyer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I talked to Joe, and Joe said, "Don't do it. Deal with an artist that's major, so you can get major money. Mm-hmm. Don't give." the few hits you had away to independent because they gonna give you some upfront money and you ain't gonna see another dime. And that made so much sense to me. But, well, let me let me say this. Cause okay. I'm not going, I don't want you to think I'm going against what he's saying, but I want you to remember this. We're in a new day and age, which is a digital, the digital yeah. world. Mm-hmm. When it comes to sync licensing and just gotta remember, the money that that's off of streams now is, is not as much as back in the day when you sold a tangible physical uh, 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 CD, CD at a record. But guess what? Every time from this this point forward, every time a record streams, you're going to be getting money. So if someone does <clears throat> sample a record and 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 your T's across your eyes are dotted, guess what's mm-hmm. going to happen? You're forever going to be making whatever was set in stone money. Does that make sense? What I'm saying? Whatever yeah. negotiated because even if like your record doesn't have to necessarily be on the radio or be in a movie, it could be just streamed. I mean, look at you imagine Drake sampling your record right now and he got a billion streams. Yeah. But see, that's that's <laughs> but that's what Joe is trying to tell me. Deal with big artists, don't deal with no independent. See, that's that's his whole thing. If you're going to let somebody use it, let somebody like a Drake use it. Let somebody like a Nicki Minaj use it, or a Megan Thee Stallion, a Little Baby, a The Baby. Don't deal with nobody independent who ain't known. Got you. You, know, you understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. <clears throat> what you think about the, speaking of um, Megan, you mentioned Cardi B, their new hit record, uh, Women's Anthem, that sampled a uh, 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 old club record what you think about that record that it's it's a hit believe it or not i just i don't know you can go to my facebook page i just did a remix with it for kizzy rock oh, okay i'm gonna check it oh. out yeah kizzy rock got a new record out called yeek man it's a hit and um the beat per minute on it is a 133 okay the beat per minute on uh wap is 133 okay so i called kizzy rock up yesterday i said yo kizzy rock uh do you have an acapella to your, your new song? He said, yeah. I said, uh, shoot it to me. So when he shot it to me, I went, put the touches on it. I need to shoot this to y'all too, you and Luke's lips. Definitely. And um, I put it together, Kizzy Rock went crazy. I shot it to him, he posted on Instagram and stuff. I want to definitely check that out. Yeah, it's just, yeah, I just took that beginning beat. Holes in a house, there's some holes in a house. And I just let that run all the way through and I got Kizzy Rock rapping over it. It sounds dope. Wow, I can't imagine. Yeah. Um, You definitely gotta, we gotta hear some new music. Do you plan on coming out with some new music of your own in the future? Nah, I mean, cause one thing about me, I'm not gonna force nothing on myself and oh. I really have to feel it. But I do have a new artist. I don't know if you've been checking that out. I got a new yeah. artist. Tell, tell, tell us His about His name him. is uh, Keto the Great. Keto um, the Great, okay. It's my, my business partner's son. Okay. And he just got out of prison doing five years, man. So he while he was in there, he was doing all his writing. So my son, I mean, my partner threw him in the studio, man. And he got, he got two little nice songs, man, we just put out. We definitely got to check that out. What you think, Miss Loose Lips? You know, I'm always down for the new music. You know, yeah, I'll yeah. review it in the heartbeat. Oh yeah, no doubt. And these are two nice songs. They not, they not no booty music or nothing. It's what's going on now. This little young stuff that's going on now. And 
I knew he had something because, like I said, I'm in the club and I played the first time I played it in the club. You know, when you hear a new song in the club, you automatically going to sit down. Yeah. Right. Like, oh, this some shit I ain't never heard before. Let me go get me a drink. You know, no joke, y'all. The first time I played these two songs, people was actually dancing off them. Oh, wow. So I had to break my camera out real quick and film it to show my partner, man, look at this. People don't even know this song and they rocking to it. You know what I'm saying? So we got something. I just told my partner, I said, you know, man, I could do the computer part, but I can't do the street part. I don't want to be out there in the street, in the club. That ain't me no more. So he's going to do that part of it. And I'm going to do the, the emails and stuff like that, man. And I think we got something. I would definitely shoot it over to us. You know, I'm yeah. gonna give you my nice opinion. And yeah, we'll, you know, we'll also put it out there to you know see what other people think. And yeah, and that'll work. And like I say, um, like I told my partner, what I like about his son, I said, yo, he went and got his own beat, picked out his own beats and everything, and he's got a good ear for music because he picked out two good beats and stuff, and. That's something that you don't find every day in a rapper. You know, they got to, you find a rapper, yo, I need a producer. Mm -hmm. I, I need this, I need that. And his son didn't do that. He got right to it. You know what I'm saying? Gotcha. Yeah. I want to um, touch on this before we go. Um, like you said, you've, you've been able to, you, like, let me put it like this. You birthed the MC, I mean, uh, uh, DJ Smurf. Um, one person I want to know, and he's your right hand man. Uh, well, first, do you still keep in touch with DJ Toon? We Is talk twice. We, we talk. We talk twice a year. Twice a year. Okay. Yeah. You, you know, know when them guys get that money, man, they they change. You know, and Smurf change and Toon change. You know, these boys became millionaires, man. So definitely. When I, they look when they look down at you, you'll scrub to them. You know what I'm saying? Oh man. Mm. You know what I've learned? Keep this in mind. How you treat people, no matter if you know if you treat people good, no matter if they go to another level, I always know that unless they fake, if they just yeah. play fake, if you do right by a person, no matter where they at financially or mentally, they're gonna always remember that. Yeah, yeah, and that's crazy because you know, I took losses. Like I say, well, Smurf and his brother was the one that came to me and was like, yo, man, forget it's your bond. You got your lawsuit money. Let's crank Ben's records back up, et cetera, et cetera. So I took my money, invested it into the company. And then when Big State came to me and they had owed me a hundred. Yeah, the distributor owed me $100,000. It was like $112,000. And they said they were filing bankruptcy. And I took that loss with a smile on my face. And then y'all y'all go running back to Itchy Barn and crank up College Park music. You know that? I mean, you know, that's dirty. Yeah. And that's what happened. Like I say, you know, okay, every, when everything's good, y'all y'all down with the team. But when things go bad, y'all ready to run. And y'all ran out and left me, me and old girl you know, with the hole in the bag. You know what I'm saying? And that's what happened with me and Smurf. Well, when, I, when, I wanted when, to ask about Toon because Toon, after, like, a lot of people don't know this because, you know, I love the history. They be like, you remember this man? He's with Shy D, but when he brought the king, when he, we, when he introduced us to the king of the South, that's right. folks don't remember that. You know what I'm saying? So when you when you saw that or saw that piece of history, how did you feel about him? Because I've, I've had a chance to sit down with two. Like, we're yeah. in the studio and forget the king, because everybody know him from the king of the south, but, you know, a lot of people don't know this. His, him being in the position he's in is because of Yeezy. Yeah. Like, that's really why two. because, you know, I don't know if you heard this, um, Toon told me that he, um, he did a track for Jeezy Okay. And uh, I guess Kanye liked the track, and G he asked, "Hey, who did the record?" He said, "My my boy Toon." He didn't. Yeah. Kanye didn't know Toon, so Jeezy put him in touch with Kanye, and the rest is history. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But with him going, like I said, doing the King of the South, and you, he was your DJ first. How do you feel about that for him? Oh, that's that's a beautiful thing <laughs> because it's so funny because. Me and Mike Fresh, when Toon was with us, 
we used to always feel like he wasn't ready as a producer. You know what I'm saying? And Chunk was like, man, I could do this. I can do this. And we was like, man, you need more practice. You need more practice. So I take off my hat to him because he stayed with it. He grinds. He stayed with it. And when I first heard the T.I. beats, they had to grow on me. I'm going to be honest. But somebody brought this to my attention and said, yo, man, if T.I. wasn't on them beats, them songs wouldn't be no hits. Oh, wow. Mm. You know what I'm saying? T.I. T. I. Pulled, pulled them songs off. And then the person who told me that said, man, do me a favor. Go back and listen to the instrumentals to that without T.I. on it. And I was like, oh, oh, shit. That make a lot of sense because these beats ain't really grabbing me. I need T.I. on here to grab me with this these beats. And that made sense to me. So that's all I'm going to you know, really say. But as a producer and overall, to make I'm proud of him. You know what I'm saying? One thing, I ain't got no hating in my body. You know what I'm saying? But I'm proud of him from that standpoint. That standpoint. But what the person was telling me about the beats, that made sense because, like I say, when I started listening to the instrumentals, I would have been like, okay, Shadi, would you be able to rap off that beat? And I was like, hell no, I wouldn't rap off the beat because I don't like it. Right. <laughs> you, know, kills me. you know what I'm saying? That that ain't... Beats got to grab me, you know what I'm saying? And and those beats, without T.I. on it, don't grab me, didn't grab me, you know what I'm saying? So, you know... That's, you know, I'm saying give, the only thing what I'm really saying is give them beats to average Joe and see what it, them songs be hits. You understand what I'm saying? No, I perfectly, I, I get it. Like, yeah, yeah. Give give them same beats, them same hit records. They was all hit records. Give them same, give all them hit record beats to average Joe rap and see what you like it the same. Think about that, sir, classic. <laughs> now, serious, man. Think about that. I wanna, I, I wanna uplift all you guys. <laughs> no, seriously. Even, even, the yeah. one, even the ones like you said that just you know start acting brand new after nice. they got to a certain place in life, we still wish them well. Yeah, yeah. You know, you know? like I said, hey, they, they are who they are. You know what I'm saying? You know, but. See, money going, money going to bring out the real you. Of course. That's what I was going to say. And one side of me, Toomp and Smurf not trying to be funny, one side of me felt they was phony and fake when they was with me. But I couldn't see it until they got the money. Uh How'd that sound? Yeah. Yeah, you know, like, I understand. Fake, I, I, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. Okay, man. I talk to you later. I right? that type of shit. Yeah. This is what I was saying. <laughs> I tell people this. Uh the first thing you have to do on just people, period, is pay attention to character. Character is the number one thing. Okay. Because everybody wants to get somewhere in life, and no matter how they get there, whatever they got to do, they're gonna do what they got to do. So just pay attention to character. And I have a, a one of my one of my favorite songs I always say to people, if you haven't heard it, go listen to it. And that tells you all, tells it all. Have you ever heard Jay-Z and R. Kelly's song, None Personal? Nah, I haven't. I wouldn't say. I want you, you y'all, go listen to that song. When you listen okay. to it, everything you said, it, it talks about everything. No, seriously. I want you, when we get off this interview, I want you to go listen to it and 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 tell me what you what you got out of it. It talks okay. about all of that. But you know, you'll, always, you'll always see people's character in when they're broke, when they oh, yeah. mad, when they mad, when they get money. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Those are three definites. You'll always see who they really are. The, the truth comes out in yeah. those scenarios right there. <laughs> Without fail. So, you know, but if you saying that, you know, people you start with, you would think they would have you know, at least some level of respect. Yeah. You know, to, you know, when they go on into their next stage in life. Okay. Remain that, keep that same respect and that humility. 
Yeah, yeah. Where so many people lose it, you know, and it, and it's sad. It's just, and that's not only in the the music industry. Yeah, that's, that's everything. That's in everything. Corporate yeah. America, you know, it doesn't matter. You name it, that's what it is. Oh yeah, and it like I say, with what we talking about, it really bugged me out. Like when uh, Smurf became successful, I saw him at this club. And he was with this real big bodyguard dude. This dude was like six eight, light skin, and him and Smurf was smoking cigars and shit. And that was so corny to me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you know, we made it. You know, I guess that was the thing. So where you at, sir? Classic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Man, he done disappeared I on us. Listen, everybody. <laughs> I'm a, before I go, cause got it. I want to say this. We as and this is beyond the music. I'm just okay. Pop a gym. Yeah, yeah. This is the gym I always give people. I had to learn. We get upset because you can only you can only get upset at yourself. That's right. When it comes to people, when you don't put a lot of when you try not to expect a lot out of people, mm -hmm. you're gonna be fine because no matter whatever whatever way they go. When you depend on somebody that don't come through, you only gonna be upset because that's you right on them. So when you try not to do, you don't have to worry about it. So I just say, if you can bless somebody, you in the position, anything that you can do to bless somebody, just bless them and keep it moving. If they blow up, don't think about you later, then that's fine. At least you know you did what you have to do to help them at that point and, mm -hmm. and let the universe deal with the rest. Oh yeah, because like I said, when them guys became successful. I don't expect them to come back. You know, I wasn't expecting them to come back and give me nothing. You know, I'm I'm still straight. You know what Not I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, I'm still straight money-wise. Yeah. You know, my thing be, one thing I don't like is fake people. You know what I'm saying? And that's, it's that's, more so the interaction. Huh? I said it's about still the interaction. It's not even about the money. Yeah, it's yeah, the, the fake laughing and the fake mm -hmm. smiling and all that, that drives me crazy because, I mean, from day one, from a young guy, I've been going to juvenile, to jail, to prison. So that's a whole nother world. And the type of guys you guys are, y'all would never make it in there. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not wishing y'all to ever go to that because I know y'all wouldn't be able to make it. You know, just... I don't know. I guess if you you fake, you gonna be fake. You know what I'm saying? I don't. I'm just you know, that's something Peter Jones could tell you. I never been fake. You know what I'm saying? And growing up in Ellenwood and stuff, nobody down there fake. You know what I'm saying? So, I think I just come from a different lifestyle. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, I was raised with my parents, both parents. They was raised with their parents, but some kind of way. The Hollywood and them came out. You know what I'm saying? That's all I'm saying. You know, you just cut, you just cut from a different cloth. Yeah, that's. that's it. I want you to do me a favor because you know I'll tell you we have a part two before we go because yeah. Mm -hmm. Before we go, I want you to um for our audience let everybody know um what you got going on where we can find you you know for you know to tell the people what you got going on and where we can find you. We yeah, well, basically, I mean, I got a Twitter page is MC Shy D. Uh, my uh, Instagram page is MC Shy D. My Facebook page is Thomas Jones. Okay. Um, and every Friday and Saturday, I'm at Dudley's on Evans Mill Road in Latonia. Let's go turn up. Yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. All right, Dudley. We can get uh, over there. No, I, I appreciate the interview. You know. Oh, I appreciate you, man. Um, like I said, I never forgot. Forgot you gave me that break, man. That man, day. You know what? I'm, no. I'm, I'm, I'm like JD. Real talk. I remember when you said it, but I'm like, I don't remember until you said. I said, okay, I remember. I'm like, yeah, because <laughs> I mean, you classic in them doggone May days. Yeah. Boy, used to have us out there working. You hear me? Like, yeah. you were coming for fun. We got to get this out here and get this done. You know Promoting May Day, like he was so serious about it, and that's always been him. His work ethic. If I can't say nothing else about him, his work work ethic. Yeah, it's it's okay. Oh here. yeah, definitely, yeah. man. And like I say. It was at a time, believe it or not, classic, where we was kind of at our low because Smurf had left and, and went, became successful with Yin Yang and left me and old girl, you know, stranded. 
me and his sister stranded. But it was cool because, like I said, I, I had plenty of money. So it wasn't a point. I was just a point of the success. You know, he went on to be successful. And I didn't he, know that. Shadi, yeah. You know, you know what? Honestly, I didn't because you never know people business unless you if you would have told me because you probably don't remember this. OK. One of my one of my acts that I had signed at that time, because normally anything I do, mm -hmm. if if I'm working with you, you're gonna you you automatically incorporate it. You already a part of it. one of my acts was um uh if I can remember SWAT team at that time. Okay. You know, little scrappy come from from all of that. So I, if I got a stage, anything that's at my my disposal, you're a part of it. So if I'd have known that. Yeah, you no, know, but it wasn't meant to go that way. I didn't know, shoot, because when it comes to the record business, I've been doing that. I, I, that's what I do. I, that's like second nature to me. Still yeah, do. I got you. You feel me? So I'm gonna reach out to you. Let's talk about uh, your new artist. You yeah, know, and however I can help, if it makes sense, let's let's get. Oh, yeah, it. definitely, definitely. Like I say, um. You know what I'm saying? Because one thing, like I told my business partner, I said, hey, man, I can't I can't go out there with him in them clubs and stuff, man. That, that's a whole nother life for me now. You know, I'm too old for that. I I can't deal with it. You know, y'all going to have to handle that part. Got you. You know. Miss Lucy. Well, I definitely appreciate you. It was an honor. Oh, so yeah, no doubt. Here talking with us. Thank you so much. Maybe when Classic comes in town, we'll roll up on you and come to Dudley's. <laughs> 